Right, we're looking at the UK uplands again. We're going to be looking a little bit about geology, tectonics and glaciers. However, this lesson, we're really going to be looking at the rock types. We've got two rock types in the uplands, igneous and metamorphic. We're going to gently look at sedimentary rocks just to make sure that we know what we do not find in the uplands. Let's just remind ourselves a bit about physical geography. Physical geography is not about Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales and England. It's not about politics and money and human stuff. It's basically nature. If a squirrel can recognise it, if a squirrel can feel it, then we're interested in it. OK, so let's have a little look at the one rock that we're not looking at today. Sedimentary rocks is stuff, right? Stuff that's settled out. It could be from an ocean, it could be from um, a desert, it could be from a river, it could be from a glacier. But the sediment has settled down to the bottom, repeated action over time, it's built up and up and up and up and up. Then whatever's happened has happened and it's now exposed as rock. So here I've got my sea eventually drying out and so too with the rock or the the mud in this case, or the, the dead plankton, um, and it would be consolidated. Consolidated basically means just becoming solid, but it won't be physically that hard. It won't be as hard as, let's say, igneous or metamorphic rock. Some of our rocks in England are incredibly unconsolidated. For example, glacial till over East Anglia is getting eroded by the sea. You could literally just scratch it with your fingernail. So sedimentary rock is that sort of stuff. It's uh, still lying flat the way it was uh, deposited um, and we're not going to talk about it today in the uplands. What we are going to talk about today in the uplands is igneous rock and metamorphic rock. Let's start with igneous rock. Igneous is basically that rock that was formed by volcanoes or magma coming up out of the uh, mantle and into the, the plate. We've got a fair amount of that. We haven't got much uh, of, the, of the volcanic rock. That would give us a very basic rock called basalt. The rock that the examiner wants you to know is called granite. Granite was magma that came up into the plate and did not quite get to the surface and explode as a volcano. Therefore, it cooled really quite slowly. It was insulated by whatever sedimentary rock it was in. So the feldspar and the quartz crystals grew and grew and grew, and it's given us a very physically resistant, hard, physically hard rock, granite. The examiner's clear that they want you to know about granite. So where is granite? Where is all this igneous rock? Well, on the screen is now a geological map. And the pink stuff, if you look at the key, is the base basalt and the granite. And you can see that there's quite a nice clear pattern. All of this igneous rock is to the west of the British Isles or United Kingdom, as we're calling it. OK, so it's all to the west. And that is why on the whole, we have the uplands to the west, the igneous a rock is strong, physically resistant, therefore it doesn't get eroded, therefore it's left up high. It's not all going to be mountains. You can see, hopefully from the satellite, we've got plenty of big hills and mountains in Scotland and further down in the lakes, say, and in, in Wales. But we've also got just quite high hills and we've got moorlands. So here in the south, you've got moorlands, hills and mountains in Scotland, the Pennine Hills, fells and mountains across uh, English Midlands or Northern England, rather. And then you've got the Scottish Grampians and the, their southern hills, mountains. Right. So Going into the exam, it would be quite good to know some names. So there on that screen are some names. I talk a lot about the Pennines. I talk a lot about Dartmoor down, down there. There is an imaginary line. OK, this is physical geography, but humans have drawn an imaginary line. And it goes from the River Tees down uh, by Dartmoor, Exmoor, and it goes all the River Tees by, by the North Tees side with the world famous High Force waterfall down to the Exmoor, the River X down south. And basically everything to the east of that line, we're going to generalise as the lowlands and everything to the west of that line, we're going to generalise as the uplands. So let's go with something like Dartmoor, which is a huge um, intrusion a basaltic intrusion giving us this um, granite rock. So here's my terrible diagram. The green lines are the sedimentary rock that we're not going to be talking about much today. 
intruding into that is a big blob of magma. Now, the magma didn't have the force or the energy to burst through to the surface, and it started to cool down and solidify. In so doing, big crystals, if you remember feldspar and quartz, turning this uh, magma into but, um, granite rock. Then over time, I'm hoping, hoping you can see that the green lines are disappearing. Over time, erosion's weathering, erosion and weathering of the rock, the green rock, means that this physically hard, physically resistant rock is now exposed for the first time. Now, relatively, it's going to be weathered and eroded slower. So over time, the repeated action of the erosion of the soft rock has left this one as uplands. Okay, and this is how Dartmoor was formed. Hopefully you can see from the photo that this red line here is that red line there, and the green is the horizon. So this green horizon here was once really high up, well above there, but it's all been eroded, leaving the harder rock behind. And the harder that rock this time is igneous intrusion granite. Please see if you can remember granite. So the next rock that we're going to be looking at is metamorphic rock. Now, metamorphic rock probably was once sedimentary rock. So it's settled to the bottom, it's turned into rock through consolidation. However, this time something's happened to it tectonically. It's either been crushed or it's simply just been heated because it was close to magma. But here it might have been crushed and heated. Now, there's two rocks the examiner wants you to know about. The first is slate and the second is schist, right? Try saying that twice. So slate was once sedimentary mud. Tectonically, it's been crushed and it's been squeezed and it's turned into slate uh, schist is a more massive rock, there aren't these bedding layers on it, and you hopefully can see from this diagram, it was more heat and more temperature in the um, creation of it. So here is the formation of some slate. I've got a, a sea, into the sea, a river is depositing its load. That is now being um, uh, settling out, is turning into a layer of mud at the bottom. Repeated action over time, you know I think that's a great little catchphrase to have in the exam. The, the mud is building up and building up and building up, but it's different layers of, of different layers of mud, different beds of mud. Now we're going to zoom in on it, and there it is now. So it's just a mud zone. It's been consolidated, that's all. But the red arrows are pressure and heat from some tectonics. Now the thing I want you to think about now is there's nowhere for it to go at the top. All right. So we can't just simply shift up. I should have put a rock on the top there. It's getting pushed from the bottom, but there's nowhere for it to go. So the only thing for it to do is, a bit like me in my middle age, to go sideways. So those once nice round circles of mud are now ellipses. You can see hopefully they're getting crushed. And that is literally how slate was formed. OK, the bedding lines there are what you, we can crack a hammer on and create the slate that's hopefully keeping your house waterproof. So where are these metamorphic rocks? Well, you can see they're next to the igneous rocks, again to the west of the T's X line. OK, physically hard, harder than sedimentary rock, not possibly as hard as the granite and the basalt. Right. So what's going on here? We're going to look at how hopefully you see my previous clip of how coral turned into this uh, amazing feature in the Pennines, this limestone pavement. But what we're going to be looking at is another feature that tectonics has created in um, British uplands, which isn't just simply it being raised up high, but this time we're going to be looking at the fault scarp. So here the little red lines are the pressure and the heat. You can see that there's some crumpling to, from the sedimentary rock so much that it's now a metamorphic, which has made it physically harder, which is why now it's in the uplands. But the pressure got too much for the relative strength of the rocks and snap an earthquake. So the earthquake has shoved, has, has broken the entire uh, sequence of rocks and has shoved one side much higher and leaves us with this huge cliff. Hang gliders love it, rock climbers love it, and that is called a fault scarp. OK, so that's another thing that tectonics has created in the English uplands. And that photograph, I'm hoping, shows you it incredibly well. So going to this, I'm going to say we sort of ticked off geology overall rocks. 
we saw tick-toff tectonics. I've introduced you to, to granite, schist and slates. What we haven't just doubled done is the glaciology. So let's quickly go to the glaciology. We're back in the Pennines. We've got those same layers of rock we've just seen. Try your best to remember some names. Millstone grit is physically very, very hard. So it's often what the fells or the mountains are in the Pennines. Now, precipitation has occurred, rainfall. Rainfall has made V-shaped valleys. I'm sorry I haven't done it more V-shaped valley. But the truth is, as the land is forced up through plate tectonics, the potential energy the water has increases and will create V-shaped valleys. But geologically speaking, we're going into an ice age and so the precipitation now, hopefully you can see my blue lines, is snow. The snow is not melting in spring and summer. The snow just builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up and becomes a glacier. Glaciers are hugely heavy and have massive amounts of erosion. They're going to pick on the V-shaped valley, but turn it into a U-shaped valley. OK, so repeated action over time, erosion, scraping, gouging, plucking, um, the glacier is going to erode that V-shaped valley and turn it into a huge U-shaped valley. Now, we're coming up to a skill the examiner again is quite clear about. You should be able to do a geological cross section of the UK uplands. So. The ice age is going to melt them. The ice uh, melts very, very quickly, creating huge rivers. Um, we won't talk too much about that and leaves us, I've forgotten it, now I've remembered it, with um, this cross section. Remember the glacial bit, they talk about erosion, which I'm saying we've ticked off now, but they also want deposition. As the ice melted, it deposited its load. Its load is called boulder clay. It's quite an interesting rock. You get some particles as small as talcum powder, some particles as large as houses, because at the bottom, if this is the glacier and this is the rock that the glacier is on, um, some rock was in the glacier, literally scratching against the other rock, turning it into powder, whereas other chunks of ice, uh, sorry, rock were in the ice or even on top of the ice, didn't get touched at all. You've got to remember boulder clay, BC, boulder clay. Then precipitation returns, rainfall, rainfall erosion, erosion transportation, transportation deposition. On top of the boulder clay, you get the more recent alluvium. Alluvium is that soil that you get in um, floodplains. This uh, has been deposited by the river meandering across what looks like its floodplain, but it's not. It's the base of a U-shaped valley. 